Hi everyone, I'm Joanne King from Bazaar.com. And I'm Leah Chernikov from L.com. Welcome to the first ever live New York Fashion Week Hangout. So what makes this Hangout extra special is you've all heard of a Google Hangout before. This is the first ever mobile Google Hangout. Yep. So what that means is that we're going to be covering Fashion Week live on the ground. We have our editors and chiefs, we yep. have celebrities, we have street style stars, and they're all going to be talking to us through their phones. And taking you behind the scenes of the top shows at New York. Um, first up is Kate Spade, which is one of my favorite shows of the week. It's so fun, young and colorful, and just a really fun way to kick off the week. Super girly. Yeah. Bring out the girl in yes, you. Yes, it does. So first we want to introduce you to our roving reporters. Um, we have Glenda Bailey, who's on location with Deborah Lloyd. The creative director will be throwing to her in a minute. Um, we have David Yee, our celebrity correspondent. Is he here? David, are you there? Um, David will be talking to I'm Brad Garofsky. Hi, David. Live here at Kate Spade, and it is so crazy. I mean, like you said, Joanne, the clothes are phenomenal, so girly. There's so many jewel tones. I mean, I'm digging the inspiration from Tokyo and Shanghai this season. Obviously, I'm Asian, and I'm just digging that inspiration for the new runway. And I mean, we're, we've met so many great street style stars from Brian Boyd to Ami Song from Song of Style. And I'll be talking to Brad Goreski, who actually styled the entire collection later on today. We love Brad. We're so excited to hear from you guys. Big reality TV show fan. Yeah. And so then next up, we also have Ruthie Friedlander from L.com and Chrissy Rutherford from Bazaar.com. Are you guys there? Hi, guys. How are you? Well, we are having a little bit of a technical difficulty with those two, but they're going to be behind the scenes. Oh, there they are. Can you see them? Yeah. Hi, guys. Hello. We're really excited to be here. There are so many exciting people here, and we are, like, obsessed with the collection. Amazing. You guys look soup chic. Thank <laughs> you very much. We tried our best. You succeeded. But, you know, the most okay. important, I think, roving ro reporter is really the readers. And we want you guys to get really involved with this. Um, tweet us your questions. Right. So it's all about you guys. We want to hear from you. So tweet us with the hashtag, are you ready for this, NYFWHangout. Sounds kind of long, but you can totally get it. We believe and in you. We believe in you. That's the most important yeah. thing. So tweet us any questions you might have about the show. Tweet us questions to Brad, to Deborah. Yeah. Oh, and of course, Kate Spade. You know, it's Kate Spade actually is brings back so many fond memories to me, and we'd love to hear from you guys about your first ever Kate Spade memory. We know you have them. Yeah. Tell us, please. So, do you have one? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Kate Spade for me really was the first bag that I ever coveted. I was in high school, and she debuted the box bag, which really put her on the map. And I was absolutely dying for one of my parents told me, no, it was too expensive. And my senior year in um, high school, my dad sent me on a scavenger hunt during Christmas, and in the back of his Bronco was a little mini black Kate Spade box bag. So, no way. Yeah, it was really exciting. You know, such a collector's item. I think your dad wins. Yeah. Best dad. Win for dad. My dad's not watching this. You are also awesome. Uh, well, so my Kate Spade memory would be that I thought they were, like, the coolest bags ever, and I wanted one real bad, and I never got one. You know, the best part about those bags is how durable the fabric was. They would have been great for Snowmageddon. It's true. They would yeah, have. They can get wet. They can go through the slush, um, which I think brings us to the style at New York Fashion Week, you know? Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, the weather outside is frightful. It is, but the parties haven't stopped. It's true. Nothing um, stops fashion. No, the fashion set actually has been hitting the party scene hard, and it's only day two of New York Fashion Week. Um, they launched with the Amphar Gala, which is this amazing black tie function. All the celebrities came out in their finest. They must have absolutely had to change their shoes in the lobby, as far as I'm concerned. Um, one of our favorites was Lily Aldridge in this beautiful white Rosie Aslan gown. It's amazing. Yeah, she looks stunning. Um, so can you tell me about this shoe change-up? Because I think that sometimes people think that editors just show up like head to toe in these like tiny stilettos, but we have secrets. Oh yeah, the truth is it's all about commuter shoes, right? Yeah. You hop on the subway and you're Chuck Taylors and you change into your boots at the office or in a taxi right before a fashion show. I mean, with this kind of weather, you just can't be slopping around on this black ice in heels. No, you will, you will hurt yourself. Yeah. It's not okay. Um, another really big thing last night was the Peter Pilato for Target launch. 
So let's you talk go? about this. I, I did stop by. Um, How was it? So, I mean, look at Diane Kruger here. She looks incredible. The collection is amazing. So Peter Pilato, obviously, she known for their friends. so good. Yeah. And it was just a really cool scene. And then there was also, last night, this Oscar de la Renta book party. And I hear he's see. taking a foray into gardening. I think he enjoys the flowers. Yeah, Oscar can do pretty much anything, and it's chic. He can do anything he wants. Yeah. Uh, and here's Cecily Lopez at the party last night looking just stunning. She looks gorgeous. Yeah. Um, next up, street style, which is one of my, you know, to me, sometimes the best part about Fashion Week isn't even what we see on the runways, but what the editors and the bloggers and the celebrities are wearing off the streets. Totally. And, you know, with this weather challenge, I was interested in seeing actually what the girls were wearing on their feet. There's our favorite um, girl, Leandra Mendine of Man Repeller, and she's got on her boyish loafers that look smart. But, like, a little sheer skirt over yeah. her pants to sort of play with the look. She's got I, the She's got to be cold. She is cold. Maybe someone's holding her jacket for her. Hey, guys, actually, we're going to interrupt that because we've got Glenda Bailey with Deborah Lloyd, the creative director of Kate Spade, on location. Hi, Glenda. Hi, Glenda. How are you? We're just getting a little bit of um, technical issues so we can hear Glenda. There she is. So I'm now I can hear like, her. As you can see, I'm like naive. Um, so this conversation was very inspired one day. One day I'll get on the orange. And the would be the navy coat with the bejewels on it. I absolutely love that thing. And I particularly love the proportion of having the feather skirt coming out the bottom. I know. It has to go with the feather, feather dress as well, yes. Exactly. yes. Do you think the navy and the cream is the key colors for next season? Absolutely. I love the navy. It's really the new black. It's very flattering to the face. And it's lighter than black, and it's my new favorite color. And I love the fact that you put all the jewels throughout the collection. That's sort of your signature. Yes. Who doesn't like jewels? So, yes. Do you think black, or do you think high? I love high. I love the height that it gives you, and I love the point of toes, so it's still my favorite. Elongated, very elegant, yeah. It also gives that sort of sexy feel, and it's not very Absolutely. I think the case is very good. All right, so we just Thank heard you, Glenda. We just Deborah. heard from Glenda and Deborah. I love I love a British accent. I do too. You? I do too. And it sounds like the piece to buy is going to be the blue bejeweled coat that Deborah herself is buying. I know. We have Brad now. We have Brad Goreski and David Yi. David, are you there? Yeah, I'm here with Brad. Hi, Brad. I'm going to go to hang Brad. Thank you so much. We're kind of like samey samey. You know, we actually as well, USC. Oh, I love that. Go to. Hey. So I'm wondering, you know, as a stylist for Fashion Week, how do you change it up every season? You know, you kind of like, I got so inspired by the clothes when I saw them that my mind just started racing. I was feeling very high, modern, sleek pony, fresh skin, and really focusing on, I was noticed a lot of new proportions, and so we really played with that this season. And, I mean, this season is Shanghai and Tokyo inspired, my two favorite cities. I mean, how did you infuse that into the collection as well? You know, it's inspired by, so, you know, we really try to, the pops of color, you know, Tokyo is so vibrant, there's so much energy. Uh, Shanghai, you know, refined elegance, uh, a softer palette, and then we have 
this beautiful navy story behind me, which is my favorite of the collection. So which look actually is your favorite of the entire collection? Right there. Right this there. one. Yeah, these two. They tie for first place for me. And why is that? Well, I love how dressed up this is, but it's a new way of dressing. You know, we still have the quintessent Kate Spade feathery cocktail dress, but with this dramatic beaded coat. And then I love the, the pajamas. Silk pajamas with a marabou jacket, a gorgeous structured bag, great shoe. I mean, I just think it's such a chic way to look for evening. I mean, for fall, what did you see kind of walking down the streets of L.A. or New York? I think in the in the uh, winter months or in the fall, it's really important to keep the focus on color. You know, I think always having that that little thing and that mm -hmm. pop. And if you're not wearing a bright color, making sure that you've got a little bit of sparkle. But always like having a little bit of energy in your outfit. Because I think so quickly when the weather's dreary outside, we can let that pull us down. I mean, let's talk about the dreary weather. The polar vortex is taking over the entire city. What can we wear? What can women wear to be still like still be chic on on the streets? Snow, snow boots and a mini skirt. <laughs> oh, okay, snow boots and a mini skirt. Okay, very daring, very wow. daring. I got a soaker. Um, do you call those a soaker here in the states? That's what we call them in Canada. When you get like your feet completely soaked. Okay. Like, okay. okay. At all. Anyway, I got a soaker because I was wearing these shoes during the snowstorm, and I quickly had to actually almost fight somebody for a pair of snow boots. So, um, it actually didn't result in a fight, but it almost did, you're saying? We never fight over fashion. And Canadians, you guys are so demure. You guys never fight with anyone, right? Very <laughs> demure. <laughs> Out in L.A., I mean, how, can you, how do you compare L.A. style with New York style? You know, I think the two are blending a lot. There's, um, I, I think the relaxed vibe of, uh, of California has kind of infused itself into... Uh, New York, and I think New York, kind of the the street style, the edgier style, um, has infused its way into California. So we play nicely together. Nicely. How about the Milan in Paris? Well, you know, New York uh, has definitely that that quintessential. It rep for me, it represents America. It represents American style. Um, and I think in Paris, you definitely have that. European flair that only the Europeans can really do. Paris is a city of love. Valentine's Day is coming soon. What are your plans for Valentine? I haven't even thought about it yet. No. I'll probably cook dinner for my boyfriend. Okay, you know, Valentine's Day is on a Friday, and the next day is Saturday, which I call sad dur day because I'm still single. Any tips, you know, in the city where I can find someone or any pickup lines that you would suggest? I guess? Um, there are a few good ones. Like, how about something like, um, I'm so tired, and then you can say, they say why, and you can say, because you've been running through my mind all night. I love that one. <laughs> my go-to that's never worked is, hey, what's your birthday is name and number, and then they shut me down. They shut me down. What's your jersey is? Name and number. So oh, and number. I gotcha. Yeah, that's no one gets it. We'll work on it after. <laughs> for fun after. And also, the Olympics are coming. Are you rooting for Team Canada? I am. You know, the Olympics are very tough for me this year. So uh, I'm definitely rooting for Canada, but I'm very not excited about it being in Russia and do not support anything that's happening over there. What are your favorite games? Durr, figure skating. I mean, <laughs> duh. Um, what do you like about figure skating? Who are you, who are you rooting for? Um, you know, I don't know. I'm rooting for to hear uh, Johnny Weir's comments. That's all I really care about. I love Johnny Weir. Me too. And also, when, we're, when it isn't Sochi, um, do, you, do you feel like Russian style would infuse into American wear any any Um, I'm not sure. Maybe. Like, we see, like, a Russian inspiration over there with that hat. Well, absolutely. Uh, that, 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 that's drama for your mama. Drama for your mama. Drama and that's where we're going to end with Brad Goreski today. Back hey guys. to Joanne and Leah. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Brad, I'm totally going to be taking your outfit advice this weekend. It's all about mini skirts and snow boots going forward. But avoid a soaker. Oh, yes. We learned some new words. We did. That's awesome. So we are hearing from the Twitters right yeah, now. What's happening on Twitter? So let's check in with them. We've got one that says, "Can you explain some front row etiquette? I.e., is it tacky to look good 
Oh, to look inside the goodie bags. Absolutely not. It's no. the first thing you're supposed to do. Check that shit out. Absolutely. You got to get your, it's always a nice nail polish from backstage or a new scent that even if you don't love it, you can give it to your mom or your sister. Exactly. First thing I do. Free gifts. Totally appropriate. What and then, oh look, someone's asking what the it shoe is for fall. Um, we're kind of calling it actually a high-low mix of Bazaar because um, Adidas actually reissued their famous like Stanley sneaker and we think a lot of editors will be wearing that as well as the Christian Dior sky high towering blue heels. So we're going to be seeing a little bit of um, high-low mix out that there. That is a lot of high-low. Yeah. Literally. All right. Let's move on to the hot list. Let's talk about what's been happening so far at Fashion Week. Yeah. Well, you know, we covered the parties and the street style, which um, really is sort of what happens the first few days. But I think when we sort of look forward to what we're going to be seeing over the next week, we have, um, there's a lot of fun, cool news happening. Um, first up, you know, we covered street style. We definitely think that um, everyone's going to be carrying that amazing artistic Prada bag. But the really big news is the birthday girls. Yeah, we have a few. So, you know, we have DBF celebrating 40 years of the wrap dress. The wrap like, dress. That has... We put her on the map. Yeah. And it's just iconic, like still modern, still works today. I know I have... Looks good on everyone. A few in my closet. Absolutely. And they'll always stay there. And then, of course, the other birthday girl is Donna Karen, who celebrates 40 years of her amazing brand. And I know she's throwing a really great party, which actually brings me to our two favorite party goers, Ruthie Friedlander from Elle and Chrissy from Bazaar. They're on set right now showing us what's happening on the scene. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 We're really hungry today. The food here is amazing today. Um, could be up with me. while you guys get your mic oh, set. Okay. Yeah, we're having a little trouble hearing you. So we're just going to talk fashion while you get it sorted. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like a real party there. It's exciting. Fashion Week, you, you should have to wear earplugs all week. I'm serious. Like, by the end of the week, I'm completely deaf from all of the music. Yeah, I think It's that like going to Soul Cycle all day long. Chic, chic earplugs. Chic earplugs. Like, bejeweled. Yeah. Amazing. Maybe with some, like, fur puffs. At the end? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's just sounding weird now. All right, well, let's <laughs> back to our favorite things we're looking forward to. So, Lincoln let's Center. talk about Lincoln Center. Well, it's sort of, I don't want to say it's a goodbye to Lincoln Center, but, you know, a lot of designers are choosing to show at this amazing new studio down in Tribeca. So, there's definitely been a big shift from uptown to downtown. It's true. And, you know, downtown is where the cool kids are. Yeah. So, it sort of makes sense, right? And then it's going to be a lot of back and forth for us. So, obviously, the coolest kid of all is going really far downtown. So far downtown, he's in Brooklyn. Let's talk about Alexander Wang. The Odyssey to Brooklyn, which every editor is clacking about. You know, yeah, I think Alexander Wang is at his prime. He's had a few amazing seasons um, at Balenciaga. His namesake line is still doing so well. And I think he just feels like, you know what, I can just be me. Yeah. And if me is, I want to show in Brooklyn, he's going to do it. And everyone will come. Yep. By boat, I've heard, actually. Yeah. They're shipping editors to Brooklyn by boat by bus, by Uber. Um, it's really, I think that's actually going to be a super fun yeah, party. Yeah, like, we're all going to have to hang out there afterwards. I think, like, the appropriate footwear for the ferry to Wang is, like, that's going to be a story. Uh-huh. <laughs> In its own. Footwear is actually, like, a com I think a common trend throughout this entire conversation is we all just don't know what to wear on our feet. It's true. Um, so how are you going to be relaxing in between shows? I mean, it's always fun to sneak away for a a glass of champagne or a bite A little tea. bite. Yeah. yeah. So there are a few new pretty cool restaurants that I think will be sort of like the it places for editors to go. To I see know. and be seen. Always. <laughs> so I know the Empire Diner has just like gotten a revamp. It's still sort of got that classic diner feel, but they've got a new top chef in there. And so it's sort of, you know, like elevated diner food, which nice. is sort of exactly what I always want. Uh-huh. Cheeseburger and fries. Yep. At the end of Fashion Week is the way to go. Maybe a little maybe, travel on those Yeah, guys. maybe. And throughout the whole way to keep us going. Um, yeah, and then the Marlton Hotel down on 8th Street, which is also sort of having a renaissance, is such a fun place to go and, like, lounge and have a drink, um, take a meeting. The bar is really cool. Amazing. Um, yeah, I think we'll be stopping by there a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And then the best place of all, of course, is just, like, bed. Oh, yeah. But we never get there. Nope. No sleep. No sleep. No sleep during Fashion Week. So let's keep talking about sort of the hot new designers. We talked about Alexander Wang, who's been hot for a while, but um, sort of new on the scene. It's public school. 
uh, that's Dao Yi Chow and Maxwell Osborne. So they're menswear designers. They swept up a ton of awards mm -hmm. in just a year's time. Big darlings, we like to call them. Yeah, exactly. And for the first time this season, they're showing women's wear. Yeah, and you know, it was a big debate. We heard um, at the end of the year that they would, and then in January, it was sort of on, it was off, it was on, it was off. Right. I don't know if they were having production issues or what, but it is officially on. They're showing um, Sunday morning, and these guys are the purveyors of cool right now, and I think totally. they are going to show a collection that is going to have women absolutely drooling. So I'm excited yeah. to go to that show. I mean, I've been wanting to wear their clothes for men. Right. Yeah, all they need to do is tailor them a bit more Just in the a waist. a little slimmer. New size selection, and there you go. Ah, we, we have, have David Yee. David? Again. Are you here? Are you back? Tell us stuff. I am. I'm still at Kate Spade. I have been, you know, dancing with the models. And now, Obviously. I've my favorite girls, the Bug Girls. Oh, hi, Bug Girls. Hi. I mean, tell me the Bug Girls. You guys are everywhere. They say hi. They say hi, Bug they want to know, we want to know, I mean, what is the snarkiest thing you've seen so far this season? And you reported. Oh, gosh. The snarkiest thing that we've reported. Um, we were very complimentary of how Alyssa Milano looked the other day at one of the shows. I believe it was Tanashi Shoji. She looks a little cranky. I believe we likened her to a gothic widow. A little early to be crabby. It's only day two. Like, you shouldn't be crabby until at least one day. Where does this crabbiness come from and stem from? How do I kind of channel my inner crabbiness? <laughs> I feel like you really have it in there, so just tap into it. Let it out. Start by forsaking caffeine and maybe also forsaking the free champagne. That, that would make anybody crush. Seriously. I mean, I'm not, I'm not strong enough to force it. Either. No one's strong enough for that. Also, what makes me crappy is a fuller vortex. What's going on now? Oh, I know. People can't handle it. I mean, but this is the thing. Fashion week, you're always complaining. It's, it's September, you're burning up and sweaty, and not right now we're freezing. So, no, we cannot be pleased. Nobody can be pleased. Sad. You know, what are you going to do? Just bring some flat shoes, just in case. We've seen a couple people in the tents bite it from wearing totally impractical, like, huge stilettos. And I kind of feel like I, I'm not happy about it, but, you know, you got to know, know thy weather. So the white is turned into red. Yes. Blood on the snow. Very dramatic. It's hot for fall. Well, at least, at least you know it goes with Valentine's Day coming soon with the red. Anywho, throwing it back to you guys, uh, Leah and Joanne. Thanks, David. Thanks, Bug Girls. We love you guys. Serving the snark. Serving the snark. Saying all the things we want to say. But can't sometimes. Yeah. So we let them do it. Well, let's go back to sort of, you know, the talked about sort of moments of Fashion Month coming up. Well, this is going to be Marc Jacobs' week. I mean, it's kind of always Marc Jacobs' week when yes, we're here. He's let's the, be honest. He's the last show um, of the week, and he's always the one who kicks off the really directional trend that we know that we're going to start to see in Europe and in London and beyond. Right. But what makes this season special is that he's no longer designing a collection in Paris. So this is like Marc at his New York finest. Yeah which is going to be exciting. And I, I've actually read um, in a few places that he says it's he's done a complete rethink of the brand. So I think we're going to be totally surprised on Thursday. He always, always surprises. So, yeah, I can't wait. It's he makes Victorian bums look cool. Was that his last show, I think? It was like yeah. Victorian, like sort of rug rats, but it was exactly Beach, what you want to look like. Yeah. like. yeah, who knows what's going on. And All he's, right. he's also um, changing his diffusion line, Mark by Mark, to a whole new name that he won't reveal that comes out Tuesday. Right. So, you know, this is it's going to be definitely the week for Mark. Mini Mark? Mini Mark. Yes, Mini. That's a good one. He Have probably, you already talked to him? He probably, yeah. I, we he just got off the phone. He did. All right. Okay, we're going to go back to social because we've got a new question from the Twitters. Um, so, if we could bring back a Kate Spade bag... Like, what would you, if you could, so if you could bring back your original little black box bag, how would you style it today to make it look fresh? I would actually, it actually came inside, but no one really carried at the time, a very long sort of crossbody strap. Yeah, I remember that. I would that. strap that on, you know, put it across a blazer with a little mini skirt and snow boots and sort of have a hands-free moment. I don't know. I think that the crossbody bag, especially like in a small um, shape, is so now. Mm -hmm. And that bag is never going to go out of style. Totally. I love I love a hands free moment. Yeah, free to snap away with Tweet, your phone. Instagram. Totally. You guys keep tweeting us your questions. We want to know about your first Kate Spade memory. Um, what you guys want to know about what it's really like to go to New York Fashion Week. Um, hashtag New York Fashion Week Hangout. So, 
let's talk a little more about sort of like what people are sort of expecting. What would people know, you know, if they're not there on the scene? Well, like, what, what's your first Fashion Week memory? Let's talk about that. Um, okay, so my first Fashion Week memory is very cemented in my brain. It was my first week of work at the Daily News and it was Fashion Week and my editor sort of didn't know what to do with me because they were too frazzled to train me to do anything so they're Jump right on in. Yeah, they're solu you know, it's always sink or swim and the solution was just okay, we'll just send you to all the shows because we don't want to go. Amazing. So I, job ever. I show up for probably like my third day of work and I, I go to the BCB show, the first show of Fashion Week and I find my seat and my seat is in the front row oh and I'm my God. sitting across from Alicia Keys and Rihanna and I was just sort of like, you had arrived. Somebody's going to kick me out. Do they know I'm here? This is not right. You're like calling your mom. Yeah, but also just trying to like, trying to be like, no, to I'm totally supposed to be here. You got to get, the, you got to get the Fashion Week show stare down. Well, I, but like I was act like learning on the like go, you, you know. There. Do you have one? Tell me. Um, oh, actually, we're going to go week. first to Ruthie and Chrissy, who are oh, back good. on the scene at Kate Spade. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Okay, Tell us what's okay. happening. We're back. Yeah. Well, we're eating these delicious eclairs, which I have to say, these are like the best. It has the best food at this presentation. Seriously, the fruit? Yeah, we had, we had fruit and chocolate, so we're really happy. Yeah. Um, and we've seen some super cute girls. There's a girl who's wearing this, like, pink skirt. It's kind of like my skirt, but in bright pink. But she unfortunately left. She stole your look, Ruthie. We also saw Erica. I know. Yeah, we saw Erica from PSA Me This who told us that her favorite things here are the bedazzled frocks, which we love too. Totally. Nice. And there's some really fun accessories. Yeah. Oh my god. The, there's like a little cat bag, which I want to get your cat for. I'm gonna get it for Greasy. It's like this little cat thing. A lot of the collection was inspired by Shanghai and it really there's like this really amazing Asian influence, which I'm very excited about. There's also this bag that has like a uh, Chinese food takeout thing. It's, it's amazing. I'm really excited. And lots of embellishment. There's feathers, sequins, fringe, everything. Yeah. And also in terms of the beauty, we're seeing like this really, really high top ponytail. It's definitely giving the top not a run for its money. For real. I love a high pony. I do too. I do too. What's your Kate Spade first memory? Oh. I had a Kate Spade backpack in eighth grade, and I thought I was the coolest thing ever. Oh man, I had like the little tiny one. I got it for my bar mitzvah, and I literally thought my life was done. Like, not need anything else ever again, fashion-wise. I kind of want to bring I, mine yeah, out. Yeah, I had it. I wonder if they still make them. I hope that they have to. It's like a classic. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you should bring it back, but also bring, bring it back, back to us. Bring it back to us, girls. <laughs> Throw it back. Guys, Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. We're having, we're having major fashion FOMO missing the entire collection. I, I hope you guys took a lot of Instagrams. Um, we're missing all the beautiful furs and bejeweled jackets. But we're missing Shanghai. We're missing Shanghai. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for bearing with us today. And uh, we hope you enjoy this like very in-depth, of the moment look at the Kate Spade show. We had Glenda Bailey talking to designer Deborah Lloyd. We had David Yee talking with stylist Brad Goreski. That was so fun. I loved that part. Hilarious. Yeah. They are, they're amazing. Talking about figure skating and... Ruthie and Chrissy are on a sugar high now. Yeah. They're going to come back to the office. They'll be fun later when yeah, they crash. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we think there will be more in store, so please, please stay with us. Stay tuned for the hashtag New York Fashion Week Hangout, and we will keep you posted on everything live from New York. Thanks so much, guys.